Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to make this quite uh, quick and uh, as tight as I can because we're running a little bit behind time. So we want to share with you um, in a rather interesting title, which is actually a build on to the title that we used last year. Um, one day, uh, I think it was later than this year. Um, so we're, we're 364 days, assuming last year was on a leap year. Um, from the last year's conference. And um, we used a sort of metaphor um, from Dr. Seuss, and particularly from um, this book, the more that you read, the more things you will know, the more that you will learn, the more places you will go. I'm actually going to challenge um, that assumption that the more you read, the more places that will take you in this follow-up talk a little bit, because I don't think that that's quite accurate. But nonetheless, just to give you the context for... Um, the innovative title may be slightly too um, metaphorical. Um, you can read here for yourself that um, Foo Foo the Snoo, as well as um, Jake the Pillow Snake, are key characters in this particular um, book. And I should also um, point out that since we gave the presentation last year, Dr. Seuss has come in for a little bit of a bad rap but I'm pleased to report the particular book we're citing from is not one that's now been removed from the shelves because of its racist um, imagery, images. Um, so we're okay, uh, but something you have to be wary of. Okay, more seriously, three key assumptions that we want to underpin the rest of what we're going to talk about. Firstly, that our professional reading really does matter. Secondly, that we're awash in a deluge of information, um, not just traditional academic publications or professional publications, but through many different channels. And thirdly, I think all of us, if we're truthful, would say that we're finding it very difficult to craft, craft out the time for slow reading. And I use that term quite deliberately, as you'll see in a second. Um, so to say, that a bit step further at the uh, NIDL we maintain on our website this link to a raft of journals in the general field of whatever we might call digital learning as educational technology and on last count there are 146 open access ones alone plus many of the restricted ones so there's probably at least 200 plus journals here one journal publication that looked at these journals um, estimated there were about 270 journals in the region. I don't know how anyone could possibly keep up to date with all of those in one given year. So that's the point about being a wash. The point about slow reading, this is a really interesting publication from some colleagues from UCD last year, questioning the, the cult of... Um, speed, if you like. And, and the digital, in many respects, in our work adds to that culture of speed or culture of speed. And in terms of um, traditional scholarship, we think about the keynote today about the scholarship of teaching and learning, reflection, taking time to think, these are all qualities of scholarship without removing it necessarily from the way it can be enhanced through the digital at the same time, but slow reading. So I don't know how many people have stumbled across what we launched earlier in the week in our top 10 uh, reads for 2021. Um, you can go to the blog site to read those uh, and we do encourage you to do so because there are three parts to the blog. We've been quite detailed in trying to explain to people how we go about this exercise and I'm going to ask Eamon shortly to have a quick um, make a comment about that. Typically what we get asked by our own colleagues, but external folk is what criteria we use, um, what sort of methodology, is it a robust methodology, who really contributes to this exercise. So you can read answers to those questions in um, one of those three blog posts, so I won't dwell on them. Some quick facts of um, what we've been doing now. This is the sixth year that we've done this exercise. So you can see the, the split by gender um, in terms of the contributions of authors that have been identified. Here you can see that um, the vast majority of the journal articles that we select happen to be multi-authored. Multi um, this year there are two single authored um, papers that appear in our top 10. But the trend in terms of scholarship towards more collaboration with colleagues 
Um, and I will show you in a second also that collaboration, I think, exists across national borders as well. In terms of the main journals that we select, there are some, um, because we focus on open access ones, there are some that um, every year tend to be profiled. Um, you can see them on this slide, but actually what I've circled there, there are 17 of the journals out of the 60 now over six years. So that's almost a third of them come from um, journals that are not better known. And we deliberately do that to try to find things that people may not have seen in their normal reading. My comment about collaboration, you'll see here that um, a high proportion, almost a third of the publications also have authors that come from across regions. So that's evidence of scholarship beyond just individuals and individual countries, if you like, or regions. So that's probably enough preamble, other than to say that the number one journal that we selected this year comes from, for the first time, having been identified, the Journal of E-Learning and Digital Media, possibly one that people don't access or look at on a regular basis, has a very good editor in Neil Selwyn, and it happens to be Neil Selwyn's journal article on EdTech within limits that we couldn't go past selecting as our number one read for the year. Really some challenging um, uh, facts and evidence around the environmental sustainability or not of educational technology and some issues that we are going to have to grapple with, I think, quite seriously over the next decade. So I would strongly encourage all of our colleagues and, and those in the community to really grapple with the questions that um, Neil raises. There's a positive side to it as well. Um, so it's not all negative, but as I said, we couldn't go past that particular article. And number two, I'm not gonna go through them all. You can look at them in your own time, but I do want to call this one out because it really says what's on the tin. There is no virtual learning. And this is a very good theoretical explanation backed with some examples and evidence of why um, the sort of trying to see on a binary face-to-face -face and online as separate modes is very problematic and doesn't really take us very far. So a very, very good read. And again, from a journal that some people may not be as familiar with. Thirdly, and this is the last one I'm going to just talk about briefly, um, really interesting piece because written by 40 authors. Um, so very challenging in how you go about writing a piece with 40 authors. It reflects on what's meant by the term network learning, which is one of those other definitions and a community that comes with it. I really like Sean Bain's contribution to this piece. Sean's obviously well known in this part of the world where she talks about the dangers of definitions because the very nature of a definition excludes things. And so we have to be wary about putting forward definitions. Maybe a lack of a definition might in itself be a strength. Um, I don't know of a definition for digital education that's satisfactory. Um, many of us just take it for granted. Other articles that appear in our top 10 are here. I'm not gonna dwell on them, as I said, I'm conscious of time. So um, I'll let you follow them up in your own time, but I would strongly encourage people to be familiar with this work. Obviously there's a time and a place where it's important, but our narrative explaining why we've selected each article is also we think quite helpful because it brings a level of critique to the analysis. What I would like to leave you with though, is you can't just rest with looking at all the free stuff. Um, and there are many journals still behind paywalls, um, restricted journals. And here's just one article that I would advocate you take a look at, the American Journal of Distance Education. Unfortunately, not everyone probably has access to this journal, but this is a very thought provoking piece. A little bit US centric, but many of the pressures and change forces it talks about are here in Ireland and Europe more generally. Eamon, do you want to just take um, a minute to just give a few sure. comments? And... I suppose, yes, I will, Mark. I would just like the opportunity to get Mark to stop talking, which is always good, uh, but actually to deeply thank him for his scholarship, because this is a group thing, but as you can guess, it's, it's led by Mark and his love of scholarship, his deep passion for this, and he's really innovating at this it's in itself as an act of scholarship, this whole process. Um, and like Mark is, is a, a very prolific publishing and he's also a voracious reader and like, ca you know, causation does not prove uh, causality is not causation, but 
correlation is not causation, but the two are interlinked. And I think <laughs> reading and writing are are, are, are deeply interlinked. I, I wrote about this this earlier this year about um, the socio materiality of reading and the the affect of reading. And it's a very good nurturing activity to give yourself. It's it's an act of intimacy to have, give yourself time, read something, curl up with a good book, with a good journal article, give yourself that deep time to read. So reading is an intensely personal thing to, to regenerative activity, but it's also a social activity, which kind of sounds weird. And it's interlinked with writing. And last night we were emailing back and forth to a couple of colleagues and someone is writing something and they said, would you have a reference for systematic literature reviews? How do you search? What is the methodology for searching in specific journals when you're trying to do a review of a bunch of literature? And I was able to say, oh, I know an article about that. And myself and Mark and Ender were, were pinging ideas around via email. And this kind of process helps you remember articles, helps you connect up literature with others. So it's very much a social process. We're building the literature as we go. And those are my very brief reflections being conscious of time. And um, uh, thank you. Well, thanks, Ivan. Then you were paid to say that stuff at the start that wasn't on the script, if I recall. <laughs> um, just a comment before I wrap up. Um, we started quite a bit late, but we'll catch up in the next two sessions as well, um, is at a personal level, um, I find it really difficult to do that slow reading as defined in the piece I shared earlier. So this exercise is actually incredibly rewarding to force us to actually do some slow reading, critical slow reading, because otherwise we'd move on to the 2022 shared Google folder that we have to share the literature. Um, Self-critically, though, how many of our colleagues have that time to do the critical self-reading, um, the know-how as well, we shouldn't underestimate, and that's not intended to sound arrogant or patronizing. It's something that comes with experience of how you do that quickly. We will be um, sharing next Monday, possibly Tuesday, depending on uh, how the next few days goes, our COVID list. We probably won't write quite the extensive narrative we did with the top 10 list. But at a personal level, because there are three selections still to be made, um, arguing over, um, I'm looking forward to having to go back and look at that literature much more deeply, more slowly, so we can make those final three selections. Um, so I hope those are useful contributions to the field. In wrapping up, um, I actually challenge everyone in our team um, did this in December to ask, what was your single one most valuable read for the year. That's just a little personal reflection. You should have be able to answer that. How do you filter the literature? And then ultimately, how can we support our staff? And this links to the opening keynote around the scholarship of teaching and learning to do more slow reading because that's not a task that you should do by yourself either because it can be shared and the opportunity to be critical and peel away the layers is done in a collaborative sense. 